We are really blessed in the southwest with some of the best countryside in the UK, much of it beautiful right throughout the year. So this autumn we sent Mike Dilger to a little known gem in the heart of southeast Cornwall to drink in the sights and sounds of the season. Kilmineth Woods, a rare piece of ancient woodland right by the West Loo River. There can't be many car parks with a view like this. Amazingly, I'm in Loo's biggest, yet look at this. They often say the best bird watching can be found right by the car park, and here, most definitely, is no exception. The river birds here are absolutely brilliant. Just in front of me, there's a cormorant and a little early morning bathe. But one of the best birds, just down there, the beautiful white egret. Lacy plumage, gorgeous birds, and my favourite thing, when you see their yellow feet, it looks like they've been standing in a bowl of custard. The river follows right along the lower part of the walk. It's muddy banks full of food for birds like this heron. These are after small fish and their quick silver technique is working. Time to head to the woods. These at Kilmineth are part of a mere 2% of Cornwall that can be called ancient. A tiny amount really. You get the feeling this wood has been here for centuries, but the individual trees are not actually that old. But this sunken path particularly is amazing. It's covered in luxuriant growth of bryophytes. Look at all these wonderful mosses plastering either side. It's just like the most amazing green carpet. Autumn has to be the best time for a woodland walk. There's an extraordinary range of yellows and golds in the trees here. Most of the trees are beech and oak, but it's that ancient woodland status that makes it so special. These are sessile oaks. You find them in the west of Britain, and they thrive in windy, salty air. Believe it or not, these trees here are not much older than me, because over the years, this site has been felled for timber. To be ancient, you need to be a lot older than this. But if you look at local maps, they suggest there's been woodland cover here for hundreds of years. But the real clinching evidence of ancient woodland status can be found right down by my feet. In the understory, there's lots of holly and there's also hazel. And if they come down below, there's lots of bilberry, classic woodland plant. But the star one for me is this lovely honeysuckle. And all these plants are ancient woodland indicators. And they tell me there's been woodland cover on this site for at least 400 years. At points, you can drop down to the river itself. And if you're quiet, you might be rewarded with great sights. Just like this red shank. or these cormorants after the abundant fish in the water. And if you're really lucky, the prize, a kingfisher. The friends of Kilmanath Wood look after this place. I met up with Chair Lynn Winter. So Lynn, how long has the conservation group been running then? We've been going for about three years now. And what kind of things have you got up to? All sorts of things. Woodland monitoring, um, activities with the children, getting experts in to tell us more about the wildlife and the flora and fauna. Well, it strikes me you know this place incredibly well, but what is it particularly that really excites you about walking in these woods? It's the fact that it's been here for so long. It's, it's, there's a, a solidness about the place. Um, it's close to the town, but you could be miles, miles from anywhere once you get here. And it's, it's an so autumnal peaceful. day today. It couldn't yes. be a finer place to be, it's could it? It's lovely, isn't it? A real haven, this and good that the friends are putting so much effort in. And great things to see, not just up in the trees, but on the ground. Abundant fungi. Important in the whole ecosystem of the woodland. This is Watergate, 
and it represents the halfway point. Now time to turn around and head steeply uphill and a part of the wood that, like me, feels much older. Up here there's plenty of evidence to show how this wood used to be managed. There's one, two, three sassile oaks that have all been coppiced. Now this is an ancient woodland technique that basically involves chopping the tree down here to collect the harvest for firewood. And that, of course, results in a big hole in the canopy. Light streams down and creates a perfect woodland glade for dozens and dozens of flowers. And, of course, flowers attract butterflies and bumblebees. But like so many woods, Kilmineth is not actively managed. There's been no major felling here for decades. In fact, I've heard that when it was tried a few years ago, some locals objected. The trouble is, if you don't carry on the coppicing, you end up with this. This oak tree is probably coppiced, I'd say about 100 years ago, meaning there's two slender trunks reaching all the way up and casting a very dense canopy. That means less light hits the woodland floor and that equates to fewer woodland flowers. But woodland birds are doing well here. There are many common species like this nuthatch, a sleek looking bird, and these long-tailed tits, one just hanging on. Although the birds here seem to be okay, many woodland species are in decline. I met with local birder Derek Spooner. And this marsh tit. To bird listen in the dense woods. Try to listen for a marsh tit. Yeah, there was one definitely there. Pretty little bird. Um, it's a nut hatch. Nut hatch. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, some kind of corvid of some sort. <laughs> it's all of a sudden got quite noisy, hasn't yeah. it? <laughs> We can hear ravens going overhead as well. Yes, and there was a buzzard just now. Nut hatch in the background. I was going to ask you how the woodland birds were doing. I think the answer is very well, actually. But I, I think they're doing quite well. Yes, yeah, so uh, I've been doing surveys here for about five years now, and uh, populations have been fairly stable. I think in that time, some birds have probably gone long ago, like the, the lesser spotted woodpecker are no longer here, but uh, those that are here are doing relatively well, I think, and holding up quite well. And our ears weren't deceiving us. At the wood's edge, this marsh tit, a bird in severe decline, relishing the free handout. And these two great tits having a real old tussle. It's all there if you have the time and the patience to look out for it. Near the end of this walk, you come right up against this big green bank. But it's a bit more than that. It's an old earthworking called the Giant's Hedge. Look at those dinky little moss-covered holes here. What could these be down to? What's small enough to live in here? Well, to find out, you're going to have to come back at night and be very quiet and still. Those glowing eyes belong to wood mice. They abound in the wood, and those little holes in the bank are their nests. And at night, the woods are alive with badgers as well. There's a large set that local cameraman, Peter McMurdy, has captured on tape. By day, you might glimpse the odd deer trekking through the woods. Or a fox scavenging for food. Well, I can't promise you as close an encounter as that, but if you do complete the two-hour circular route, as I've just done, and you keep your eyes and ears open, you can get to grips with some cracking wildlife. What a great place this is. But sadly, there's little ancient woodland like this left. Let's do all we can to hang on to what remains of these precious places.